I would put music and some audio cues in this intro, but I don't have any. Sorry. Warning, if you have not seen whatever it is that I'm reviewing, this video may contain spoilers of key events. You'll have to consider this before watching the rest of the review. You have been warned. Plastic Memories is simultaneously one of the most frustrating animes I've seen this year, and one of the most engrossing animes I've seen this year, despite being based on concepts that aren't all that unique these days. After all, Blade Runner and Ghost in the Shell exist, and even in the category of TV anime or OVAs, I've already come across the whole android individuality play-by-play -play through Kaware Kake no Orgel, Eve no Jikan, and Chobits, which, if you're familiar with my Twitter, AskFM, or occasionally within this very YouTube channel, Channel, you'd know I fillet Chobits to no end. So what exactly makes Plastic Memories such a standout? Well, not much at first glance. You've got the human, you've got the android, and it's apparent from episode 1 that it sure does take pages from Blade Runner, whether it be the whole limited lifespans of the Giftias, the androids of this world, the fact that there's an agency in charge of dealing with them, this time through memory wiping instead of outright killing, and you know there's gonna be a corporation looming in the background. I guess what I'm getting at is that Plastic Memories is less defined by what it doesn't do compared to other works of its kind, but is defined by what it decides to tell with its its own characters, using pre-existing elements to form a story about loving someone till the end. But underneath all the downbeat character moments, the philosophical underpinnings of its key relationship, and the inner conflict of Tsukasa's emotions towards Aizla, and the purpose of his own job, lies an anime that has trouble deciding what it wants to be almost as much as it conveys its main point. Though, in order to explain how, I'll have to back up and give a rundown. The story is mostly centered on Tsukasa Mizugaki, a young man who failed to enter college and is given a job opportunity to work for Terminal Service Number 1 of Psycorp, the world's leading creators of androids known as Giftias. Giftias are essentially artificial humans who closely resemble the real thing. They can think, eat, drink, sleep, cry, feel, and can even go to the bathroom like humans do. It's best not to think about that for too long. But by happenstance, Tsukasa catches a glimpse of a white-haired girl named Aizla while riding in the elevator, having a crush on her instantaneously. He is promptly introduced to his co-workers, notably Michiru Kinoshima, the tsundere who serves as his superior on the job along with her partner Zack, Kazuki Kuanomi, Tsukasa's boss who sports a powerful demeanor despite being bad at handling her fair share of alcohol, and of course, you have Aizla herself, who's revealed to be a giftia, an old one in fact. And from this day onwards, she is to be Tsukasa's partner at the Terminal Service. So what does the Terminal Service do? Well, they retrieve Giftias that are at the end of their rope. Which is to say, they reformat them and wipe away their personality. Yeah, as cool as they can be, there's a catch to all of this, and it's that each Giftia has a limited lifespan of around 9 years. And once those years expire, let's just say they cease to function properly and turn into mindless zombie ninja androids, and we'll leave it at that for now. So in order to prevent this from happening, they must have their memories cleaned away and their personalities erased so they can either be handed back to the Psy Corporation or be repurposed as a new person entirely. And as you can imagine, the anime's core is centered around this very idea, considering that Aizla's own lifespan is running out. It's a job that can lead to sadness, but sometimes emotional closure, as Tsukasa's particular terminal service branch deals with Giftias with care and empathy, rather than force like the other branches of the terminal service which will have him facing love, friendship, and the drive to grow as an individual, while also setting him up for compromise, internal conflict, and ambiguity. And as Isla's own lifespan is on the verge of expiring, he must ultimately make the grueling choice between his own selfish feelings and the well-being of the one he loves most, and you know what? I like this premise! I can get on board with this! Now yes, you might have encountered this before, and come on, admit it, you couldn't help but make comparisons. Androids exist with limited 
limited lifespans that are made by a corporation. The terminal service are more or less Blade Runners turned customer service agents who do things by the book rather than shoot to kill. You have a futuristic setting, albeit a future that's less grimy and miserable and more colorful and promising. Memories is an essential theme. And even when you go towards more lighthearted affair, Chobits and Eve No Jikan have the whole man and machine relationship bases covered. But where something like Chobits questions mankind's attachment to technology by using androids as analogs for said technology, i.e. computers, smartphones, tablets, etc. And where Eve No Jikan uses androids to convey a point about the value of those who are different and the acceptance of their existence and free will among a broader societal spectrum, Plastic Memories puts most of its focus on its relationship aspect between people, which is a running theme in the series. Up until they are inevitably wiped clean of their personalities, Giftias are already accepted and are usually treated as if they are real people. And since they are so well crafted that they are able to function like real people with or without a predetermined lifespan, the theme of societal acceptance or technological obsolescence is left in a ditch. Not to mention that it downplays a corporate influence angle. So if you're expecting a message about corporate power or the like, that's not the point either. I think the first episode kinda establishes the rules that define the core of Plastic Memories. It's easy to expect it to be a candy-colored Blade Runner, but instead we get all this character relationship building, humor, and drama, which may feel like the show had duped you until you realize that the first episode's dilemma between our main characters and the old lady who repeatedly refuses to let go of the little girl Giftia she loves is meant to set the precedent for what the show is truly about through a parallel. Plastic Memories goes about exploring its core man and machine sentiment by using multiple cases of which how close a person can be to another, whether human or Giftia, and how that comes to impact Tsukasa's own plight. From the main subject of his and Isla's relationship, to the other relationships of some of the others we meet, like the bond between Sota and Marsha, or Eru and Andi, much like Terminal Service Number One's practices, the anime emphasizes a level of understanding from the viewer for what conflict may arise. It's definitely clear that as Tsukasa's bond with Isla grows, the closer he has to make the big decision like the people he deals with during his job, even if it isn't much of a choice when looking back at it. It presents his arc with a sort of growing tension, knowing he really will have to let go of Isla by the end, and though that sounds like a spoiler, it's more like an inevitability, as it's an element that's never shied away from. Almost episode per episode, we learn more about Isla, her history with Kazuki, her fears, and see her slowly grow out of the self she's become. It makes me so glad that Plastic Memories, for how silly it can be, is willing to play things straight when necessary. She refuses to make new happy memories in fear of not only her own pain, but the pain of others, knowing her end is finally coming and no one can stop it. And when adding Tsukasa's determination to love her for the rest of her days, it makes for compelling drama that formulated some of my favorite moments in the series. Hell, the show even has the balls to subvert some of the most predictable predictions I had going into it. For a minute there, I thought Michiru was going to start this really generic, boring, out-of-place love triangle and flat-out ruin much of the goodwill the show had and succumb to easily one of the biggest pet peeves I have, but I was glad to be wrong. Turns out she understands Tsukasa's conflict, seeing as how she was raised by Giftia when she was younger, and helps him achieve his goal of getting Isla's love, and you have no idea how relieved I was that the anime took such a direction that made me appreciate her more than ever. This is a case where the cast carry the weight of the story on their shoulders, obviously an approach that can fail if the characters aren't up to snuff, especially within a sci-fi story that deals with memories and how it ties into individualism. And while the main cast and some of the bigger supporting players cut the mustard, the rest simply do the job but they aren't all equal. It's obvious the show puts certain characters as higher priorities than others, not helped by some of the directing decisions that I'll talk about in a bit. To judge the majority of the cast, they have enough personality to them to know what kind of person they are, even if their depth is inconsistent. This dude is the cowardly but idealistic manager guy, he's the suave dude who likes the chicks, she's a bit of a kudere, he likes to tease, and so on. They all fill the space for our bigger characters, which is a tad disappointing seeing as how the show knew what it had 
had to do to drive the point home when it came to the main characters, but they don't drag it down either. If there is anything to blame, it's the direction, which, unfortunately, suffers from a case of wanting to be more than a sci-fi story about a man and the machine he loves. The have-your-cake-and-eat-it-too syndrome, as I like to call it. It's around here when the frustrating part of watching Plastic Memories rears its ugly head. You see, it doesn't just want to be a sci-fi romance, it also wants to be a comedy and a slice of life, which is fine and could even fit together so long as the anime keeps its eye on the ball and never let go more times than it needs to. Quite frankly, it could be a mess at times. The direction can be all over the map where it shouldn't. One of those directorial decisions being to throw in pointless gags and antics wherever possible, and if there's one thing Plastic Memories has a problem with, it's dealing with juxtaposition, where something like, say, Chobits was clearly written as a romantic comedy first, sci-fi story second, the opposite is true of Plastic Memories. Of course we need misunderstandy gags. Of course we need the characters getting into silly antics. Of course we need to make a huge deal about these two characters possibly getting into a close romance with each other where hilarity ensues. But does it have a solid point to it? Does it serve a substantial purpose? Does it better fuel the crux of the story's themes about the emotional complexity of being in love with a gradually dying android? I don't know. But just when it flies off the handle like it does, a switch is flipped and things go back to what they once were as if nothing happened. Then again, that's because things don't actually happen when it goes filler on our asses. I don't know why the direction has to shift like this. It's not even natural. It can literally feel as if a light switch was flipped. Considering the series is only 13 episodes, you'd think they could have spent this time fleshing out the other characters, rather than spending its time on humor that just doesn't work. Considering what it's about. Also, I have to question some of the logic. Remember when I said that expired Giftias turned into mindless zombie ninja androids? Well, I wasn't kidding. Just look at this. She's a zombie and a Naruto ninja with super speed and strength. And now it goes into a super serious moment in the rain. Tears and rain. Tears and rain. Also, have the people of this world never heard of the concept of backing up your files? Giftias have obviously been around for quite a while, and it's said that they all have operating systems, so why isn't there the ability to store their memories for when they need to be reformatted? Why can't they just install CCleaner and wipe away all the unnecessary temporary files, or perform a defrag? Have Psycorp never considered the possibility to develop technology of copying and pasting memory data on external storage? Are they doing this intentionally? in order to maintain consumer control? Why haven't said consumers demanded for the ability to back up the key essentials for a Giftia's personality? Either this is subtle commentary about rampant corporatism influencing and limiting control of individuals through unchanging business practices, or they've simply never heard of the concept of backing up data. I personally think it's the latter, considering this exact question is never brought up once in the show itself. But all in all, most of my gripes would have to come from plastic memories being too too thematically underwhelming to be about anything other than the nature of relationships. It just so happens that Tsukasa loves an android who's near the end of her predetermined lifespan, and when the anime takes advantage of that fact, it is compelling to the end, and when it stops being about that for yet another pointless gag scene, I just wanted to yell at this anime to get back on the boat and continue doing what it does so well. When you're exploring something as philosophical as the consciousness of an android and the unbridled love of a man who loves her, I'm sorry, but you can't afford to mess around for too long. When Plastic Memories works, it looks like this. And when it doesn't work, it looks like this. When it works, when it doesn't work. Works, doesn't work. Works, doesn't work. Works, kinda works, but it requires context to make sense. I love how the show articulates Isla's own conflict, and the stuff involving her and Tsukasa being together is great, but will you please stop stalling by having random detours? Because at the end of the day, Plastic Memories is a story about relationships that shows the emotional drama of loving someone defined by a lifespan, and how they could impact us despite being a machine, and how we could impact them even as their life is ticking towards the end. And when the anime pauses for for even a moment, it just suffers for it. It becomes a slog that feels so sluggish and so irritating to watch. I, I have to literally play music to stave off boredom when that happens. But just as I thought about walking away, in comes something powerful enough to get me right back in. That is Plastic Memories from beginning to end, and though it has problems, I still cared.
You know, there's a scene near the end of the series where Tsukasa and Aizla are sitting in a ferris wheel during their final moments as a couple and they start listing each other's personality traits after she asks what he loves about her. That was probably my favorite scene in the entire anime. It's the culmination of their time together and a great source of levity leading into a gut-wrenching moment where Tsukasa has to make the inevitable choice. The show could have been given a tighter focus and it's easy to notice holes in the logic, but from the beginning of Tsukasa's first day on the job to the ambiguous ending, Plastic Memories may be an up and down experience, but it's one that delivers the correct blows to keep interest going. The characters aren't always the best, but even the little nuances count, and it's damn refreshing for an anime you think would have a concrete, played out love triangle to avoid one altogether in a way I can't help but respect, liking a character I thought I would hate to oblivion. It's a derivative work with androids in it that tells a somewhat distinctive story with androids in it. You aren't gonna find social commentary about android equality or whether a machine can be as human as we can, because Giftias are already played as if they are mostly equal to us in society. It isn't a story that deals deals with technological obsolescence because all Giftias seem to be well made enough to function like human beings no matter what. And though a corporation looms in the background, they also aren't the focus. At its core, Plastic Memories is a character-driven story about love and how it can impact who we are as people. Whether you're a human with a life ahead of you or an android near the end of a limited lifespan you are given. It's not the most complex man and machine story out there. It's not like there's layers upon layers upon layers to interpret. But I'd say that if you're going to talk about one or maybe even two things, then you'd better do so with enough strength to keep me hooked. And though it stumbles along the way, at least it told what needed to be told.